Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Blake here from ChessPathways.com, and in today's openings video, we're going to be talking about the Lolly Attack. So the Lolly Attack begins as an Italian game. So we have this position we're probably mostly all familiar with. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description to my video on the Italian game. If you want more information about this opening in general, black's going to play knight f6, and white's going to play this aggressive line with knight g5. Usually not good to move the same piece twice in the opening, but in this case, it's actually pretty hard for black to stop this threat here to the f7 pawn. So black usually plays pawn to d5, uh, trying to stop this bishop from attacking f7, e takes d5, and if you play this opening with black, you probably know that it's kind of ill-advised to recapture this pawn right away. This is a trap that every beginner's fallen into. Um, it's most often associated with the fried liver attack, but this is an alternative version for white. Um, usually black plays knight a5 here or some other move. Again, you can watch my video on the Italian game if you want more background here. But the lolly attack is going to begin after black takes this pawn with knight takes d5. Again, this move is not recommended for black, but we're going to see how white can play here. You might be familiar with the fried liver attack, which begins with knight takes f7, king takes, and now queen f3. And now we see the point. If the king retreats, then the knight's hanging, white gets their piece back. Um, White's, of course, are winning there, of course, because they won their piece back. They won the pawn. The king can't castle. Um, that's horrible for black. So black has to defend that knight so they at least can stay up a piece for all their suffering. But, of course, black comes under a big attack. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link, too, to my video on the fried liver attack in the description. Black has tried to play this position sometimes and tried to prove that their extra piece is worth more than white's attack. Now, it usually doesn't go so well, but sometimes it does. But today we're not going to be talking about the fried liver attack. We're going to talk about a move that fewer players know here. Everyone knows this trap. But coming back here after knight takes d5, white doesn't have to play knight takes f7 and queen f3 and go to, for, the, for the fried liver attack right away. White can also play the lolly attack with pawn to d4. In more recent years, this is considered even stronger for white than the fried liver attack. White still wants to play knight takes f7 and sacrifice this knight. That was the whole purpose of putting it on g5 if black falls for this trap and takes back on d5, but white's delaying that for the time being. White's just blowing open this center with pawn to d4, trying to blow open some lines to make that central king even more vulnerable. So I had some fun analyzing this position. It looks very difficult for black to play. Let's just take a look at some of black's options here and what white can do in response. So one obvious move is bishop e7, right? It makes sense to uh, develop your last kingside piece, attack this knight, and get ready to castle. So this move really forces white's hand. Uh, the only move that makes sense for white is knight takes f7. Anything else would just be uh, very inconsistent with white's play. So knight takes f7, king takes f7, queen f3, forking the knight and king. Just like in the fried liver attack, the king has to come to e6. Otherwise, white regains the piece with interest. So king e6, knight c3, knight b4. This almost looks like one of the main lines from the fried liver attack. But now we see the merit of this pawn on d4. White can play queen e4 here not only defending the c2 pawn, but also threatening queen takes e5. And the problem for black is, if black defends the e5 pawn, now the knight gets kicked away. And if the knight abandons the other knight, then white's going to win their piece back, and white has a nearly winning position. In fact, I'm probably being conservative when I say that. Probably it's just dead loss for black, to be honest. <laughs> so coming back here to our starting position of the lolly attack, we saw what happens on bishop e7. After knight takes f7, there's really no way out of that for black. So what else could black try? I saw that black has sometimes tried here bishop b4 check, which is very rarely seen when this pawn can just block with c3. But black has a clever idea here. If white blocks this check with c3, which white pretty much has to do, otherwise black can just go ahead and castle. So white has to, uh, to gain this tempo by attacking the bishop, but now the bishop will come back to e7, and black's point is now white can't play knight c3 anymore. So does this change the evaluation? Let's see. White can still play knight takes f7, king takes, queen f3 check, king e6 is still forced. And here I was pretty amazed. White can just go ahead and castle. Absolutely no rush. It's kind of funny here, the situation with this d5 knight. It's true that white has trouble adding this knight as an attacker to this knight now because of this, uh, this pawn on c3. But black also has real trouble reinforcing this knight. This knight can't come to e7. The bishop took that square. This knight can't come to b4 like we sometimes see it come to uh, in the fried liver attack because the c3 pawn is there. Um, so how does black reinforce this d5 knight? And if they can't reinforce it, that means the king can't move, the king's stuck defending it on e6, uh, the queen can't move too easily, the queen has to watch over that knight. So black's really tied up here. After, for example, rook to f8, queen e4, 
Black has tried here b5, just trying to desperately get this bishop away from the d5 knight so Black can kind of untangle their position. But okay, bishop takes b5. Now white has two pawns for the piece they sacrificed. Bishop b7, d takes e5. There's a third pawn for the piece white sacrificed. So white already has full material equality again. And this king is still here on e6. And even here, it's not clear how black's going to save themselves. If they play knight takes e5, they're walking into all kinds of, uh, of pins here on the e-file. If they play king f7 and try to run away, now the d-file's open, rook d1, bishop c4 is a threat. Uh, this is a disaster for black. So that covers the, uh, the bishop b4 check idea here on move 6. Um, let's consider what happens if black just takes this pawn, e takes d4. I found a really nice line here. Um, white doesn't have to sacrifice right away yet, because this knight's not attacked again. White can just go ahead and castle, get ready to attack on this open e-file. And if black does nothing here, now white's threatening to go for the standard fried liver attack stuff, but with the rook getting involved. For example, knight takes f7, queen f3 check, and if king e6, now rook e1. And black would be in big trouble here, so black generally has to play bishop e7, trying to kick that knight away, but also sealing off the e-file for the time being, but we know what's coming. Knight takes f7... Queen f3 check, king e6 is still forced. Again, you can't just go back to the back rank because then white regains the piece they sacrificed. And white's just winning positionally. So king e6. And now knight to c3. Even with the pawn on d4, white can play knight c3. White just sacrifices yet another piece just to open more lines to this king. So now comes rook e1 check. Knight e5 is pretty much forced. If you come to d6, of course, the knight's hanging here on d5. And furthermore, it's just checkmate. So knight e5 is forced, now comes bishop f4, just threatening to take that knight. Bishop f6 takes, you have to recapture of course. Now a rook sacrifice, or sorry, an exchange sacrifice. King takes e5, rook e1 check. King d4 is forced, <laughs> because of course king d6 leads to checkmate with queen takes d5. Bishop takes d5, if the queen takes, uh, at the very least there's rook d1 picking up the queen. So, rook e8 was tried in this game. There's really nothing better for, for black to do. I mean, white sacrificed a lot, but your king's on d4. It's probably <laughs> not going to survive. So, queen d3, check. And now comes a very nice mating attack. b4, check, 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 checkmate with the rook finishing off the job. Very pretty illustration of white's power here in the lolly attack. Um, I really like this move, knight c3, just letting black take a second piece. Very beautiful. All right, so that covers that option here uh, for black. It's starting to look like nothing black does really works. Instead of taking with the e-pawn, black could consider taking with the knight. But after knight takes d4, just c3 is very, very good for white. Black's already probably going to lose material here if they don't do anything drastic. If the knight moves away, the knight's just hanging here, and white hasn't even committed to sacking the piece yet. So that would not be good. And if black tries here to scramble with something like h6... Simply knight takes f7 anyways. White's going to get the same kind of attack, but they're not even going to be down a piece uh, because they can pick up this hanging d4 knight. So knight takes d4 is no good. Um, sometimes black has tried here f6, uh, just attacking that knight and stopping the knight from sacking itself for that pawn. <laughs> but white can just play d takes c5 here and just let this knight be taken here if black wants it because, of course, now this d5 knight is hanging. So knight takes e5 could be played, uh, just recapturing that pawn. White can take on d5, of course, but black's hoping they can get their piece back here. Bishop takes d5, f takes g5, and now castles. Now here, the black king probably has more chances to survive. But remember, white didn't have to sacrifice anything to get this position, because black had to give up a piece too. So we really just have this position where black has these double pawns. Uh, the central files are wide open. Black's not castled. White is... Uh, rookie one's coming very soon. Uh, this is still much, much better for white. So that about covers all of black's possible responses here, and I think white's responses to uh, all of black's options are very forceful and convincing. I really can't see a way for black to get even a playable position in the lolly attack. If someone's out there who voluntarily goes for these lines as black and you have a secret that I don't know about, definitely let me know down in the comments. I'd be curious to hear how black can improve on some of these lines but I think I'm pretty convinced that the lolly attack is even better for white than the standard fried liver attack. What else can black do here? You can't just move the knight away, because then f7's just hanging. It's not even a sacrifice anymore, then f7's just free. Um, bishop e6 is probably your only other viable option, but that's a horrible move to have to play when this knight can still take you. White's not going to have to sacrifice anything here, remember. White hasn't committed to knight takes f7 yet. White could just take on e6 at some point and double those pawns, but you can probably just castle first. And what's black going to do here? Again, it's very hard to see how black can play this position. For example, if you take with the pawn on d4, you already have to worry about some stuff on the e-file. 
If you take with the knight, now you lose control of e5, and I think this kind of thing starts to work with takes, takes, queen h5 check, and you can't play g6 because of queen takes e5. Or I guess you can try to go for this, but it looks very dangerous for black. Um, just the fact that white castles so early, the center's getting blown open, black's still a couple moves away from getting castled. All the lines here look very dangerous for black. All right, thanks for watching, everyone, and please make sure you visit chesspathways.com and get signed up today. It's totally free. Only takes five seconds, and I'll send you a free move-by-move -move guide to chess thinking when you sign up. It took me way too long to become a chess master, and I want to help you do it in a fraction of the time. Thanks, and I will see you there.